welcome to another episode of How to Be a Great Player. If you haven't already watched the previous episode, the question asked in that one was how to role play a female. Now, there have been lots, of fo- lots and lots and lots of comments floating around on that particular video, and I want to point out that this is one of the reasons why we should actually ask these kinds of questions, is because we all have very different approaches to answering them. And if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to go and read the comments. They range all the way from support right the way through to disappointment. And uh, if you are one of the disappointed ones, I would encourage you to look at the video from the aspect of helping you to play a character better. And yes, stereotypes abound and we insult and take ourselves back to the 1880s where we uh, look down upon the fairer sex. And we shouldn't even call them the fairer sex anymore. They're now the equal sex, only with boobs. So, this episode is how to roleplay a male character if you're a female player or if you're a male player who doesn't really know how to roleplay a male character, perhaps. Or all of the others. When we look at a male, we're going to look at it exactly the same as we did as a female. The first question to ask yourself is... Why do you want to play someone of the opposite sex? And uh, clearly the reasons I gave last time were perhaps a little short of the mark. So the reasons now, although they are very similar to why would you play a female character, why would you play a male character? Is it to explore a different way of looking at things? Although according to a very famous author, apparently we all look at things the same way because we're all people. I disagree with that. Um, The other option is to explore the idea of the opposite gender. Again, this is something that you have to do in your head because everyone has a very different approach to just exactly what is a different gender these days. So perhaps you want to explore what it is like to be a stereotypical male as defined by the 1950s pamphlet, What is a Stereotypical Male? You might also want to examine the stereotypes themselves and decide whether or not you agree with them. And uh, if you do, how do you explore them as a player without turning to caricature or ruining the game? So ultimately, why would you choose to play a member of the opposite sex? Well, there are a lot of reasons, and I personally feel that there should be at least one reason for doing it, aside from it being purely a cosmetic function. So what are the stereotypes of the male The very first one is the macho male, who fears nothing, charges into battle, shags every woman he comes across, and drinks a vast quantity of alcohol. In other words, he is a male chauvinistic pig. Or as one of my favourite female actresses once said to James Bond, a misogynist dinosaur. This very strong type of male cares nothing for anything else apart from himself satisfying himself charging where angels fear to dread simply because his brain cells are in his loincloth rather than in his skull. This is the very typical idea of the barbarian male who indulges himself rather than anybody else. The next type of hero is the weakling hero, the male character who is a man but he's just not strong enough to compete. He just doesn't have the brawn to take on the big macho man but he's got the intelligence to do so but he really wants to be a man but he's a weakling he's physically scrawny he just doesn't have the build for it the weakling hero is the one who ultimately triumphs in the end according to stereotype and literature because he's the good guy he is the type of man who thinks about others who takes compassion into account and who leads with his heart rather than with his groin. You then get the bookworm, the scientist, the reserved male character who really does not take combat into account. He doesn't see himself as a combatant. He certainly prefers to use his head rather than his brawn. And he is the type of character who is perhaps picked on in high school because he's the nerdy guy. He still has a heart of gold, or perhaps he hasn't, and he's become hard and callous to the world, and he simply looks down on everyone as being mentally inferior. Of course, then there is the true gentleman, whom by today's standards shouldn't exist, because he treats 
people who are of the feminine persuasion in a different way to how he treats his male companions. He is the kind who opens doors, pulls out chairs, and who makes sure that the uh, weaker members of the party are looked after. The true gentleman is very difficult to play because, well, the idea of chivalry as we know it really only came about at the middle of the 17th and 18th centuries. Before then, it didn't exist. Chivalry was a code of honor for knights. It had nothing to do with how one treated women. If you look at all of these stereotypes, however, and there are plenty more out there, of course, but if you look at all of these stereotypes, they all float around a few central key points. And those key points are really the man, the male character, is a character who was always fighting for position. Whether it is mental superiority or physical superiority or sexual superiority, the man in most types of situations is fighting to prove their own value and their own worth. Whether this is to attract a female to mate with, or whether it is to prove their worth within the tribe or the people, it doesn't matter. But when you are role-playing a male character and you are not someone who is constantly trying to prove your worth, this may be a good approach for you to take. Try to prove yourself at every turn. And any sign of weakness if it is physical, then you should be mentally strong. If it is mental weakness, then you should be physically strong. Any sign of weakness across the board is simply looked upon as some kind of runt, and you have no option but to rely on a strength of emotional capacity. So when we look at how do we portray a male character psychologically, well, stereotypically, we now know you're trying to prove yourself on many different levels to prove that you are of capacity and that you are capable. So how do you play a male character? Well, you could try and lower your voice by speaking in the lower half of your throat and by expanding it as much as you can and using your diaphragm to talk with rather than with the more passive approach that we adopt on an everyday basis. But I would recommend against it if that is not something that you can do easily and I certainly wouldn't recommend straining your voice for it. Also, when females try and put on a deep male accent, it can sometimes sound as ridiculous as when males try and put on a female accent. It just doesn't sound right. So I perhaps err from that. The advice I gave on the female video was to speak softer or more rolling approach. When speaking like a man, one of the things you can do is clip your words. Make each word an attack against everybody else. Be harsh into the way that you speak your sentences and finish them off resolutely. Always have some kind of dominating approach to the sentences that you're making, even when being passive. Even if you are submitting, you still have a certain amount of defiance because ultimately you are trying to prove yourself to whomever or whatever, or even sometimes to your own self. Because if we are all honest with ourselves, most men are little boys who are 12 years old and don't really know what they're doing. Try and be more goal orientated. Now, I know that a lot of you will say, oh, but the fairer sex is also goal orientated. Yes, this is true. Men, however, are fixated on it. All of our activities, most of our activities, some of our, there is an activity that men do. A lot of our activities that men do are goal orientated. We like to achieve goals because it makes us feel as if we can accomplish something. It makes us feel as if we have worth. This is not to say that the other side of the gender does not have the same approach, but men seem to focus more on getting the job done. We would rather have a solution to a problem than to explore the reasons why it was formed or to look into alternative solutions so we can avoid it in the future. No, punch it in the face, kick it in the groin, leave it for dead and pee on it because you are man and you have proved you are powerful. That solves problems. Climb the mountain, put a flag on top of it and don't bother about asking the mountain whether it likes the flag or not. Constantly prove your value and your worth to everyone around you. This requires a certain amount of bragging, and we all do it, 
regardless of what's between your legs. However, men seem to relish doing it, and as a matter of fact, a lot of pastimes are spent elaborating and perhaps embellishing activities and achievements to our fellow men. It is always about power versus position. Whether you are the meekest, most stuttering type of little man who really doesn't want to hurt anything but wants to protect his little wife and family or he wants to protect his husband and family or he wants to protect his little piece of land, somewhere deep inside there is a man who is proud of what he has achieved. Even if it is just a small little patch of land, it is his and he will defend it one way or another. And if he can't defend it, he will be very, very, very angry. But he probably won't tell anyone around about it. So role-playing a male character is as difficult as role-playing a female character. And you will have to rely on all of the stereotypes that are out there, whether they're good or bad, to convey a sense of masculinity about your character. I don't know if there's anything more that one can say on men. If you play men too emotionally sensitive, well, perhaps they're a metrosexual or perhaps they're just a raging queen. It really doesn't matter. The point is, when you are trying to role play a particular aspect, whether it is gender or race, and by race, before anyone jumps up and down, I mean an elf, a Vulcan, a Klingon, a dwarf, an ogre, one has to rely on the stereotypes to convey a message to our companions, the people sitting around the table. They need to be able to get a sense of who you are, and the easiest way to do that is by playing to certain stereotypes. So as I said in the previous video, understand the stereotypes and layer them so that you might have this macho man who proves his dominance by shagging everything that he has. But underneath that layer, there is someone who is totally uncertain of themselves, who is totally unsure of their place in the world, and who certainly needs a hero in their lives just as much as they attempt to be the hero in everyone else's lives. That's the layering that you'll need to do in order to avert just playing a stereotypical kind of character. I hope this video is helpful. If it isn't, well, leave your comments below and as has become very clear from the previous video, I would challenge anybody out there to release videos of your own on how to play the opposite sex so that we can build a solid library of options that allow us to look at various ways of going about it and doing it. But your video must, must contain some information that is constructive. And the wonderful quote that keeps getting thrown around, oh, I write my female characters just like everyone else because they're people too. Yes, that does not help us to role play the character in a way that conveys it to others. Everybody's a people. That's absolutely fine. But release your video on how to play the opposite sex with steps or processes or whatever it is that you want to include and we'll collect them all here so that we can really look and unpack this obviously thorny issue around how to role play the opposite sex. Until next time, keep writing those comments. I love reading them, even if we disagree. Hit the like button, hit the dislike button if you really must, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more, and until next time, happy playing.